Hello and welcome back to another video. Today, I'll be covering what's new in the WordPress 6.7 release. So, let's get started. So, the first thing is the brand new 2025 theme, which will be released with WordPress 6.7. If you're using the default and standard WordPress theme, this will be the new default for WordPress in 2025. It's a minimal and simple theme. Let's dive into what's new with this theme. Before checking the theme here, let's review some details on one of the WordPress release pages. You can see some of the new features that come with this new 2025 theme. Again, it's pretty basic and simple. They seem to be focusing more on images and image galleries, with new color options and different typography sets. They've also introduced some new font pairings. You can see photo examples here. Now, let's go over to my live site, and I'm going to do a live preview with the 2025 theme. To review it, let's click on the Customize button to see the visual layout of the theme. If you go to the Patterns section, you'll notice some new patterns available in WordPress 6.7 with this new theme. Alright, one new feature we've noticed is the ability to customize the preview size of the patterns. You can increase or decrease the preview size using the preview slider, which will adjust the number of patterns displayed. As you can see here, now it only displays two patterns on each row. If you want to change the layout of the patterns, you can switch between table and grid layouts as well. Let's again make the grid layout for patterns. WordPress 6.7 introduces new block support, including borders and drop shadows in group blocks. Let's check it out. First, Go to the Appearance and Editor section, and then visit the pages from here. And you can edit one of them by clicking on this Edit Page icon here. Scroll down, and we'll make this block a group section. To add group block with this first select the parent column block for this section. And then, click here and select the option as a group from the list. So now we have our group block. Let's view the styles options by clicking here. Scroll down to Block Settings, here you'll see new options for borders and drop shadows. Let's add some borders to this section from here. And you can also adjust the border radius if needed from here. To apply a drop shadow, click this icon, and you can activate shadows. You need to click on this shadows option to activate it. And now you can see the drop shadow option here. Let's click here and select one shadow, like this. And, now you see the shadow effect here in the block. Let's also add some padding for a better look. You can see how these new border and drop shadow features can enhance the design of your block section. Another important feature in WordPress 6.7 is the toggle zoom out option. When you click it, the page sections zoom out into a smaller version, allowing you to easily review the entire layout. You can update or add new patterns by clicking on the plus icon that appears at the top and bottom of each section. This lets you quickly add new sections. You can also review all the available patterns and easily drag and drop them into place where you want. For example, let's select this pattern and drop it here. After adding a pattern, there are some options appear in the sidebar where you can move the pattern up or down, drag and drop, or edit it. There's also a shuffle feature which seems to randomly shuffle the patterns for you to review. To edit a pattern, simply click on the edit icon and it will zoom back in, letting you make modifications. This is a useful feature with smooth animations and layout controls, making it a valuable addition to WordPress 6.7. Next, we'll explore some new features and enhancements in the style section. Let's check it out. Go to the top and click on the style section. First, we have the new background option. Here, you can set a background image for your website. Currently, there is only one option available, but I hope we'll see more features and options in the future. Now, let's go back to the main styles section. Let's see the typography. At the end of this section, we have a new option for font size presets, where we can set different font sizes. Click here to see the available font size options. As you can see, by default, there are six font sizes available. Let's check out the last one extra large font size. In this section, you can increase or decrease the font size using the slider, and it will update accordingly. You can see the font size is changing here in the block when I change the font size from style option here. 
There's also a fluid typography option, which is useful for dynamically setting font sizes for responsive websites. When enabled, it automatically adjusts font sizes based on screen and viewport size. You can also set custom fluid values by enabling this option and defining the minimum and maximum fluid values for your desired font sizes based on screen sizes. This fluid typography and custom fluid values are great additions for dynamically setting font sizes to fit the screen or viewport, enhancing the responsiveness of your website. Now, let's go back to the font size preset option. Besides the default presets, you can also create your own custom font styling. Just click the plus icon to add a custom preset. Now, click on this new custom font option here. We can adjust the sizing as needed here by changing the size slider here. We can also rename this our custom font preset option. Let's click on this icon here and select rename option. It will pop up to rename the field. Once done, you can save the settings. For now, I'll remove the custom font size and stick with the default. Click here to remove it and select Remove Custom Font Presets option. These are some of the new updates in the style section. Alright, there's also an update to the query block, so let me show you that. First, I'll add a new block after this section, specifically a query block. Let's select the query block, also known as the query loop. Now, from this point on, I don't need to do any manual work. Just select the query block, and we can choose from several options by clicking here. As you can see, there are multiple post listing formats available by default. You can choose whichever format you prefer. For example, I'll select this one. It automatically arranges everything, displaying the posts with the picture, image, title, and thumbnails. Let me adjust the width to the maximum, and now it's displayed correctly. Let's save the page and view it on the front end. On the front end, it displays all the posts correctly. You can see how the query loop makes it easy to display a listing of posts in different formats. Let's go back to the back end side. If you want to change the post display, just click on the replace option here. This will open a pop-up where you can select a different format. For example, if I choose a different layout, it will automatically replace the section with the new selection. This feature can significantly improve productivity and save time when selecting post listings. As you can see, we have changed the post listing format to our newly selected style. And the last thing I'll mention for WordPress 6.7 is that they now allow you to update HIC images. These are images created by iPhones. What they're doing now is allowing you to upload the image in the HEIC format, and it will automatically convert to JPEG. This improves compatibility across different browsers and compresses the image for faster loading. Additionally, there's autosizing for lazy loaded images. You can also explore all the details I shared in the video on the WordPress 6.7 roadmap on the official WordPress website. Here, you'll find more information about the new features and enhancements that I shared in this video. Feel free to review everything and share your feedback if you have any. Alright, that's it for this tutorial. If you liked it, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and click the bell icon to be notified of new tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.